because we are kings and our words matter. You got to see your success. Then only you can walk in that success. You got to see your victory before you can walk in that victory. God has designed us and made us in such a way that if you cannot see it, you cannot have it. And if you can see it, whatever it is, if you can see it, you can have it. Have you ever read in the Bible, anywhere in the Bible, where angels are seated around the throne of God? 
that God is sitting on his throne and the angels have pulled up some chairs and started sitting all around the throne. You will never ever read in the Bible anything like that. You will read about how the angels are standing there in God's presence, praising God and, and so on. But you will never ever read that the angels are seated in the presence of God. Why? Because God as a king is seated on his throne and to sit along with a king, you need to be of the same kind as the king. You got to be a king to sit there. And I say to you that you and I are seated there with Christ Jesus because we are not like the angels. We are kings in the sight of God. God treats us as kings. That is why we are seated in the presence of God. Now that means a lot to me. We're seated right there. Oh, what a great honor. What a great privilege it is to be seated in the presence of God. Now, a lot of people don't realize the importance of understanding this. Nobody ever sits in the presence of God. Angels are standing in attention in the presence of God. Nobody can sit in the presence of God except men and women like you and I who are made in the image and likeness of God and have been made kings. God says, come and sit over here. Not somewhere over there, but right at my right hand, right along with my son, Jesus Christ, you sit right where he is sitting because you are as much a king as he is and I am, you sit right there. So I say to you, you're royalty. See, that's where the revelation of kingship is there. You're royalty, you are seated in the heavenly places along with Jesus Christ at the right hand of the Father God because you're royalty, you're king, so you can, see, you can be seated. Now, it is so important to understand this because understanding who you are determines how you will live your life or how you'll behave. Understanding who you are has a lot to do with your life and how it's lived out. For example, now when you understand that you are a king, you know for sure that you're a king and you believe it with all your heart that you are a king and it's gotten inside of you and filled your head and heart and you think like a king and you live like a king and walk like a king and so on. Then you can't be griping and murmuring and complaining all day like some Christians do. Have you ever seen a king sitting there and saying, well, I asked for water, nobody is respecting my word. For half an hour I'm waiting and nobody brought me that water. There's no respect for me around here. Nobody listens. You never see a king talk like that. Have you ever seen a king get up in the morning and say, I don't know what we're going to do for food next month because all our supplies are gone, you know, money is low and oh, I don't know what we're going to do here, you know. I, anybody eats or not, the king eats. Hello. Remember in Elijah's time, Eli, Elijah's time, there was a great famine. Great famine in the land. People were suffering, you know, starving literally. Uh, no rain for three and a half years and, and it has really hurt the land. Nobody's eating. But in the king's house, they're eating. When God wanted to feed Elijah, he sent the raven to get some meat and bread for him. I know where it came from. <laughs> came from the king's kitchen because Elijah is a king. I'm sure the raven got it from there. Ravens, usually the Indian ravens. You know, I have to explain this overseas, you know. They don't understand Indian ravens, you know. They're very special. Some countries you don't even see ravens, you know. Indian kaka, you know. <laughs> it's an amazing thing. I've never seen a kaka that gives. But in the case of Elijah, this kaka brought and gave all the way from the king's house. You see, the king eats, nobody, no matter who eats or not, the king eats, the king is not worried, the king is not troubled by recession, the king is not troubled by famine, the king is not troubled by all the things that are happening around him. The king is not troubled by what's going on. The king knows that he can do it. He can have whatever he wants. He can have because he is a king. You will never see him complaining. I've told you when I was building, I mean, when I was doing this air conditioning, you know, one man stood here, you know, 
as the work was going on he was rubbing his stomach you know and he's a good man if he's a friend of mine and he's good well wisher of mine and and he was worried about me so well, how pastor is going to pay all this bill you know that's his worry how is he going to do it but so far we have paid it we, we have never even thought about oh boy this is so much you know because for a king is an ordinary thing hello <laughs> hello <laughs> i never sat around complain about how big the bill was no but for a king it's just an ordinary thing it's just something to be paid so we just pay it you know we never say oh i'm afraid how much it's going to be this month you know my god you know check that meter you know is it running too fast you know check it out you know no for a king it's nothing hello <laughs> are you there <laughs> i'm not talking about me i'm talking about you right now see when you got the king's attitude when you know that you are a king your whole life changes the way you look at things the way you face challenges and problems and difficulties and so on everything changes because you look at it from the perspective of this fact that you are a king for a king it's not difficult for a king all things are possible amen so a king does not gripe and complain and murmur and sit and you know scratch his head a king simply orders and gets things done he knows he can do it because he's got resources plentiful and abundant in his hands amen now you got to get you you are a king you know that is why you are seated in the presence of god you better believe it otherwise you can't sit there angels are standing who are you to sit you can sit because you are royalty that is why you are made to sit there now there are some passages in the bible you will understand when you understand kingship when you understand your kingship for example there is a passage in the bible that says when one man gets saved there is great joy in heaven have you ever read that we always quote that and people always talk about oh when one person gets saved it's so wonderful in the sight of god there's great joy in heaven what is happening what is this about this one person being born again i believe when you're born again angels are out there taking notes where you went to church where you gave your life to the lord the date of your new birth and everything because they're going to record it in the book of life up there in heaven and when they go and record it in the book of life up there in heaven there is great rejoicing in heaven not just because you're born again here your sins are forgiven and so on no the thing is a king is born for a king now i've been to some of your parties where you had a party for your child that's born some of the some of the people here you know have had children after 6 7 years 8 years you know they throw a big party boy kill every goat in town you know <laughs> have a big party because they couldn't have a child now they had a child you know and they they deserve to celebrate you know and they make a big deal out of it they do it in the five star hotels and do it up nicely and so on you know just because a child is born you're so happy in your family you've got a descendant that makes you so happy i'll tell you there's great joy in heaven because a king is born the king of kings has given birth to a king that is why the celebration goes on in heaven there is a big party arranged in heaven there's a whole lot of shouting and screaming and great joy and rejoicing in heaven because a royal child is born in the king's family so you got to think of yourself as a king when you think of yourself as a king the whole life changes a king does not steal from anybody because he thinks he's got too much why does he want anybody else's stuff hello he doesn't want nobody else's anything he doesn't want uh, a few hundred rupees from somebody no because he's he's a king he's far about that these things don't matter to him he's got so much more that he doesn't care to take any man's stuff hello are you there with me see how it alters our life when you think that you're a king 
You don't want any man's stuff because you begin to think, I got too much, man. I got too much. God has blessed me so much. You know, why do I want anybody else's things? I don't want anybody else's thing. I'll just enjoy what God has given me because I'm a king. See, there are certain things that we will not allow if we accept the fact that we were kings and uh, live by that fact. We will not allow certain things. The only people that act so low and live that low life is because they have a low self-esteem. A person who steals has a low self-esteem. A person who curses has a low self-esteem because bad words are coming out of his mouth. He doesn't think twice about it. He, th he thinks that's fine, you know, because, uh, you know, he doesn't think of himself as a king, but a king thinks that's too demeaning for him because he's high up there. He's in such a responsible position. He's a person of dignity and he cannot use certain words. So he will not use those words. A king thinks differently. Therefore, he acts differently because he knows that he's a king. He talks and he thinks and he does things totally differently. Hello. Another thing is that we are seated there, fellowshipping with God at his right hand. Now, that itself has not got into a lot of people, you know. When I taught on prayer, I dealt with some of these things, you know. A lot of people treat prayer like a begging session, you know, where they are outside the gates of God, standing outside the compound wall yelling, Ayya, Amma, like, you know. If you close your, close your eyes and hear their prayer, you think a beggar has come, you know. <laughs> because they pray pretty much like a beggar, you know. But prayer is not like that. Prayer must be viewed totally differently. We are seated at God's right hand and we're having a conversation with him. We are seated at God's right hand. We're just talking to him and getting things done. How many of you think if you're seated right next to God, you were given a seat right next to God at his right hand and you were able to lean over to him and tell him about some of the things happening in your life and get all your needs met? Hello? How many of you think you'll get everything done? If you had such proximity to a king and lived in that kind of state and condition, that's what prayer is all about. Prayer is us getting together with God, being seated at the right hand of God, our Father, and sharing with him about these things and so on. Prayer must be viewed completely differently. We are in fellowship with God. See, a lot of people don't understand fellowship. Fellowship is something very special. There is one thing about fellowship. You cannot fellowship with someone who is below you. Now, you can love a person who is below you and help a person, give him money, clothes, food, this and that, and you can hug that person, you can shake hands with that person. You can do all that. Fellowship is different. If you just shook hands, that's not fellowship. Some people think coming to church, shaking hands is fellowship, you know. That's not fellowship. Fellowship is two people's minds meeting and thinking together, planning together, envisioning together, carrying the vision together and so on. That is fellowship. Now, fellowship is on a deeper level. So you can, you can have something to do with a person that is below you. You can love him, treat him good, and, and, and be nice to him, and give him some things, and so on. But you cannot really fellowship with him. Fellowship is something different. You can fellowship only with someone who is equal to you. Because if you fellowship with someone that is below you, you cannot see eye to eye with that person. Like I said about that person that was standing here rubbing his stomach, you know. He was rubbing his stomach because he's used to paying 500 rupees a month for his house electricity. Now he looked at this and said, my God, how many lakhs it's going to cost? Now I can, I can understand his thinking. Where is 500 rupees and where is some lakhs of rupees? So he's worried about me. He's my friend, you know. He's worried. My God, pastor is finished, you know. I'm paying 500 rupees and pastor is paying, I don't know how many lakhs he's going to pay every month, you know. Poor man, he's going to build this thing and suffer. You know, that's the way he's thinking. See, I love him and he loves me. He's here because he likes me and he's interested in me and he wants to help me and so on. But the thing is, his thinking is on a completely different level. If I had to consult with him and see if we can do the air conditioning, he'll say, no, brother, don't do it. We don't need air conditioning. For two hours, we can sit in the hot. 
no problem after all we are walking down the street and getting on the bus and we are suffering so much two hours for god i'm ready to sit have you ever fellowship with people like that i fellowship with people like that <laughs> that's not fellowship because i think differently and he thinks differently our our eyes can never meet he can never think like me and i can never think like him i think totally differently we we just don't meet you know we just can't i love him he loves me but no fellowship you know not thinking is not the same right when it talks about Mo- moses the bible says god spoke to moses eye to eye i like that that's fellowship with moses moses is an ordinary man but god spoke to him eye to eye god fellowships with man that shows that man is in god's category he is the same kind as god god spoke to moses eye to eye just right in front of him he kept him and talked to him reasoned with him and what did he speak let me read to you something it's amazing turn with me to exodus chapter 7 Exodus chapter 7. Now if you read chapter 5 and 6, let me just give you a little short gist of it. So you'll get the context of it. God meets Moses and tells him to go and talk to Pharaoh on behalf of the people of Israel to let my people go. God says you go. talk to pharaoh tell them tell him to let my people go so moses goes over there with the people of israel and they say well we want to go on a on a little vacation few days We've been working very hard but we want to celebrate our feast so we want to go on a little vacation and the king said vacation you guys have been talking about it that means you have too much time in hand so hereafter we will not give you the straw you go find your own straw and you'll have to make as many bricks as before the work will not reduce because you have idle time and you're talking about all these things and you want a vacation now get back to your work he said so all the people were upset you know because moses went and told them god told me to go tell pharaoh let my people go and pharaoh didn't listen to him just threw him out just said get out of here and increase the work and the people began to trouble moses they said we listen to you look we got double work now we were all right before as slaves but you made us doubly slaves now we're working so hard man because we listen to you you said god told you told you to do this we went and did this and we are in big trouble because of you what god told you didn't work moses it didn't work so moses goes before god and says god you know you said the wrong person i can't even talk i got a stuttering mouth I got a problem here man you know just I just can't talk right and the guy won't respect me you know even our own people are not listening even the people of Israel my own brother and they are not listening to me they are not respecting my words how will pharaoh listen to me he says that you read the story how will pharaoh listen to me if my own people don't listen to me he won't listen to me no i'm no good i can't talk and you better find someone else and you know i i got uncircumcised mouth and and my you know my mouth needs to be fixed i just can't do it i'm not able i'm afraid i can't do it it won't work that's what he said and god said to moses listen to verse 1 and the lord said to moses see have you got it have you got your bible turned there that is why i brought you here because i told you if you can't see it you can't have it you want success in your life you got to see it with the enlightened mind you got to see it you got to see it with the eyes of your understanding being enlightened you got to see it with the spirit of revelation and understanding coming to you by the spirit of god and showing it to you you got to see your success then only you can walk in that success you got to see your victory before you can walk in that victory god has designed us and made us in such a way that if you cannot see it you cannot have it and if you can see it whatever it is if you can see it you can have it we have raised a thousand voices just to lift your holy name and we will raise thousands more 